By 2024, we're gonna have 50% of the energy consumed by our members coming from clean energy resources. Uh, it's been amazing that we've achieved these goals despite the pandemic. A uh, very challenging year for us, but you know, with determination, we're gonna power right through it and we're gonna reach these goals and deliver on our mission. As a utility, we're moving at light speed right now. It's, it's traditional for utilities to move slowly because we wanna preserve reliability. That's our number one mission, our number one goal. But these days we're moving very quickly and we're making rapid, rapid changes in our energy mix. It's being led by our members, that's what they want. And in doing so, we're making the most uh, complete transformation in this, this company's history in terms of uh, our fuel mix and what we're making energy with. Yeah, so we're gonna be adding over a thousand megawatts of new renewables just in the next three years. And by the year 2024, half the energy that's consumed by our members will come from clean energy resources. By the year 2030, we'll have 70% of the energy consumed by our members coming from clean energy resources. So as we're making this energy transition, one of the directions that came from our members was make sure we keep power affordable. And, and they wanted us to make this transformation not only without increasing rates, but while actually having a goal of reducing rates. Now initially that seemed like kind of an impossible dream, but what we've learned is that the prices for new renewables are coming in so low that we're able to make this transition and lower rates at the same time. In fact, we set a goal to reduce rates by 8% by the end of the year 2023. As we make this energy transition, there's a lot of benefits that come, but there's also some pain that comes along with that. And especially in the coal dependent communities where we've had resources for so many years, Colorado and Craig, we wanna make sure we're working with those state and local officials to help that community in its transition. They've done so much for us, we're gonna make sure we're giving back to them. As part of the energy transition, not only do we need uh, dispatchable resources, we need to be in a day-ahead market, but we're also going to need a lot more transmission than what we have today. So in order to move these renewables around when there's surplus in one region to another region, we're going to have to add new transmission lines. It's just a requirement. It's like building a new superhighway. So for us to move that energy, that's something that's needed. One way to help that along is through a regional coordination under a regional transmission organization, or an RTO. So something like Southwest Power Pool, they already have experience with this bringing together regional utilities, doing joint regional planning, not just what our system needs or just even what our and our neighbors need, but the entire multi-state region. And when you do that, you can develop large transmission corridors that'll let you move massive amounts of new renewable energy from where it's de deployed to where it needs to be consumed. So one of the things we like about Southwest Power Pool as an organization is it's a member-driven organization, just like Tri-State. The members all have a voice in the governance of Southwest Power Pool. And not only that, the state commissions have a unique voice in Southwest Power Pool through the regional state committee. They can meet and pass resolutions and provide that counsel to, directly to the board of directors of Southwest Power Pool. In uh, December of 2020, we filed our first electric resource plan with the Colorado Public Utilities Commission. In doing so, we analyzed a number of scenarios and the preferred scenario that we selected was the one that resulted in an 80% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions for energy consumed by our Colorado members by the year 2030. So as we look at that case, it involves the uh, closure of the Craig plant and mine during that time between now and 2030. And then as we look beyond 2030, we see increasing impacts for the remaining resources on our system. So we continue to add clean energy resources as they're cost effective, but we continue to reduce our reliance on fossil fuel resources. 